Let's talk about the front band of this Tiffany Thomas outfit. You can see here I have got a front band that's been trimmed with entredeau and lace for the little girl outfit. Then I have just the piped band for the little boy outfit. Both of these are view A. It's one solid front piece of fabric. View B is pretty similar. The only difference is you've got a split yoke. The construction's exactly the same. For view B, you first need to attach your piping to your yoke and then attach the skirt to the piped yoke. And once you have that, you have your complete front band on the outside. So let's talk about boys versus girls. The little boy's shirt will have the buttonholes on the left hand side as it faces you. The little girl's shirt will have the buttonholes on the left hand side as it faces you. That's important because that will determine uh, the order or the side that you're sewing your band to. So here I have my front pieces and the front band. Obviously, this is a girl's uh, shirt. The first thing that you're going to do, whether it's a boy or a girl, is you're going to have your interfaced front band, and you're going to put your piping or trim, if you would like, on each side of the front band. The next step is going to be to sew the band facing The band facing needs to be sewn to the band. And so I like to do that from the wrong side so that I can get a stitch closer to the piping than the um, previous stitching line. So you can see here I have my stitching line where I attach the piping to the front band. I'm going to go back now and stitch this again, but get closer. As I stitch this one thread closer, I like to um, make sure that I use the needle down option so that if I stop to readjust anything, uh, nothing shifts out of place. I don't typically use very many pins, if at all, when I'm sewing, so that seems to work well. Once the band has been stitched, I like to give it a, a visual check to make sure I'm as close as I want to be, and I'm probably going to get a little bit closer here. Um, so you can go back and correct anything that might be needed, and then after that, you're going to trim your seam allowance in half and press this to the inside, meaning wrong sides together. Whenever I trim seam allowance, it's necessary to grade as well because we have several layers of fabric here and you want the fabric uh, or the seam allowance that faces the right side of the garment to be the longest. So to do that, I take my ginger scissors, you need to have really sharp scissors for this to work well, and instead of just cutting them with the scissors uh, at you know straight I guess 90 degree angle from the facing I lay this so that if this were laying down on the, the table the scissors is actually laying against my hand as I cut and that does take a little practice because it feels very awkward at first but when you grade your seam allowances this way, you don't have to grade each one, one at a time. And you can see when I turn this over that you have different layers of the, or different widths. And it's only slight, but that does make a difference 
uh, in the overall garment because you don't have one hard seam finish there. Because I'm doing the girls version of this top, I stitched the facing of the front band to the right hand side as it's looking at me um, of the front band. If you're doing the boys version, you would want to stitch this facing piece to the left hand side of uh, the front band. So that is, you know, something to be aware of which side you're stitching. Now the next step is dependent on which way you wish to finish your seams or finish the front band. My preference is always to do as little hand stitching as possible. So my preference would be then to take this front band, place the right side of the front band facing to the wrong side of the blouse front. And then obviously you would press you would press the seam allowance towards the facing and then I would press this back and place it over that stitched seam allowance and then I would stitch in the ditch now if that's what I'm going to do I have to make sure that this piping is stitched at the finished uh, depth so I would need to go back and get another thread closer because you remember how we get closer each time. If I were to just turn this now and stitch in the ditch, you can hopefully see that this piping is a little fatter looking than this piping and you want them to be the same. So as you can see, I have stitched the facing to the front of the blouse with the right side of the facing to the wrong side of the blouse. I've pressed that seam towards the facing. I did go ahead and you can see hopefully that I've stitched even closer to the piping on this side and then graded that seam allowance. And now I'm ready to secure this by stitching in the ditch. So I'm gonna fold it over towards the front. I will pin this in place to secure it. If you don't wanna use pins, you can always use the um, Roxanne's glue based it. It is a, a water soluble glue. You would then just have to wait for it to dry and I don't want to do that. And then I am going to use my open toed foot because that really helps with visibility and I always use my mag eyes when I'm doing this sort of work because using the fine thread um, it's fine. It's harder to see and by using my mag eyes, that brings it up really close so that it kind of looks like rope. You want to make sure as you pin this down that the seam line, the second stitching line where you stitched your piping a bit closer, covers and sits right on top of the stitching line here. I've shortened my stitching line to a 2.0 that helps with keeping the stitches uh, hidden because they're a small stitch. And as you can see, I am stitching right in that seam line where the piping joins the front band. And I will continue stitching this all the way down the front band. You always want to remove the cording from the seam allowances. So I'm going to remove a quarter of an inch from the seams up here and then at the hem, I'm gonna pull out an inch because we have a one inch hem at the lower edge of the um, top. And you wanna remove as much bulk as possible. You've already got a lot of bulk here with the, um, all the piping and seam allowances and everything. So pull that out and clip it off. So after you pull it out, then smooth that back out and you can see it's less bulky here where I've removed the cording. So do that to both edges of the bottom and then the quarter of an inch at the top neck edge. Um, another thing I'd like to mention, 
I did not do any stay stitching at the neckline edge. I, the more you handle um, your garment pieces, the more likely you will get some distortion or stretching. I only handle my pieces as much as necessary, which isn't a whole lot. So I typically do not bother with stay stitching, but you know what your sewing skill level is, and uh, it's not a bad idea to, to get into the practice of stitching around the neckline in the front and back to prevent stitching. That will help the collar go on more smoothly. So the next step is the under facing or the the underband I think I called it and that will go on the other side of the garment now again because I'm doing a girl's garment it's going on the left hand side of the garment as it faces up if you're doing a boy's garment it will go on the right hand side of the garment as it faces up and again you have the same option for either stitching right sides together and then flipping it over and hand whipping this facing down on the inside. This is an area where I never do the hand stitching because um, the underlap is never seen. All right, I'm pinning the right side of the underlap to the wrong side of the garment. I will stitch that and then I will bring it over to the front and uh, machine stitch that down as well. So here you can see I've edge stitched my underband to the other side of the top. You can use an edge stitching foot for this or um, I generally use my open toed foot uh, but you just want to get close to the folded edge and you want to make sure that this folded edge just covers the stitching line. This completes the construction of the front band and underband.